I have finally seen Morbius, the latest film in the Sony Spider-Verse, and I have to say, it's one of the worst comic book films I've seen in a long time. It sucked, not in the good way, but in all the bad. It's a film with terrible editing, soulless characters apart from that of Matt Smith, and some of the worst CGI in recent years. I'm not going to waste any time and get straight into my spoiler free review, but before I get into the reasons why I thought Morbius was pretty bad, if you want to see future videos on more comic book and movie related releases, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my spoiler free review for Marvel's Morbius. So Morbius is the latest addition to Sony's Spider-Man universe, with Jared Leto playing the titular character, and it was a chance to delve deeper into Spidey's extended world. This was a chance for a quite unique offering from the studio in bringing us something different from say the likes of the MCU in their Spider-Man films. With a genre so loaded on very similar types of films, Morbius could have been an example of one that takes us into a more violent landscape with that of Spider-Man. Spidey's anti-hero. And this for sure would have benefited from a better depiction of violence and a higher rating, especially when they've cut out the blood and made us hear the guggling of it when we cut away instead. It's almost like they are trying to make it suitable for the group who casually watch Marvel's many films every year. But while that was a problem, Morbius is also an approach that feels really outdated in all of the worst of ways. Originally a Spider-Man villain who's not really an anti-hero here, the biochemist's search to cure his rare blood disease accidentally turns him into a living vampire. While the story addresses his aim to stop his condition from being deadly, the film and primarily its script doesn't show the humanity in his reactions to dealing with this superhuman condition. There's little interest from the character when he makes high jumps, there's barely any worry when he learns he's responsible for killing, and everything just feels very mild. They could have been real emotion ingrained into this story, and with the correct writer, this may have been a lot better as a separated film. Where this all goes wrong is in the execution, and it comes from a mixture of studio handled choices and pretty much everything from a pre production and filmmaking level. After Morbius connects with Vampire Bats, we get a flashback that shows the origin of a kid with a rare blood disease seeking the cure for himself and his friend, a kid named Lucian, who is renamed to Milo. As adults, Morbius is a brilliant scientist with questionable ethics, and Matt Smith's Milo is his financer. We also get Adria Arona as Martine, who is both Morbius's research partner and love interest. Morbius decides to test the cure to the blood disease on him himself, so he injects the vampire bat DNA, and of course, the vampire drama begins. Most of the other supporting roles in this are quite forgettable, and really, the only one that stands out and brings some sort of character is Matt Smith's Milo, who you could imagine would be even better if the script and story gave him more to chew on. He was honestly more compelling than Michael, and I think that you can also tell he's having much more fun in his role than the other performers. But yeah, there's nothing to write home about with the performances, as Gerard Leto, who I think is actually a really good actor, just isn't given the persona that his character could have had. Elsewhere, Michael Keaton is obviously a part of this, but not as much as the trailers let on. He doesn't even appear in the actual film, and it's not until a post credit scene that we actually get anything of him. And plenty of people have spoken about those post credit scenes, and yeah, they are pretty terrible. But to be honest, as someone who just wants a good story and good filmmaking, I think the post credit scene are the least of concerns here. There's so much wrong in the film's production, whether it be script writing, editing, pacing, and horribly bad visual effects, that it all seems like it was completely rushed. I'm sure one day we'll find out more about how everything went wrong from a production standpoint, similar to that of say, the last Fantastic Four film, but yes, there's not really any way to hide the final product on display. 
The script we got is one that briefly touches on him being an anti-hero tragedy before turning him into a perfect hero. After all, this did come from the writer of Dracula Untold and some other outdated films that may have been okay 30 years ago, but even that is stretching it. There's also the bigger potential of entertainment value here too, but even that is sucked dry as Morbius ends up feeling like the worst blend of a origin tale and vampire film. Maybe Maybe one or the other fleshed out might have worked better, but when it comes to the basic elements of the plot, this isn't anything we haven't seen plenty of before, let alone the drenching of exposition with no weight. It's crazy to me that Sony would even greenlight such an uneven screenplay for a character that could have had a lot of potential when it comes to a cinematic film. The dialogue, the characterization, and plot all possess the simplicity that even comic book films of the 90s would do better. But even even the tone and type of film we get with Morbius is one that feels like it was forced into because the original idea was either too edgy or even worse. I don't know which one it is, but it's clear that things aren't working here. There's about 40 minutes of a simplistic origin storyline before we get to all the science, ethics and vampire stuff that only derails it even more. There's just a complete lack of coherent storytelling and the moments of horror and vampire action don't even have the bites that they could. A lot of this comes from the horrendous editing and it just confirms that there were heavy changes also being made in post-production. It's so obvious from the final cut that the film was sliced up and things were thrown out to remove the initial vision. Every scene feels too quick, cutting from one to another, and pair that with soulless writing and characters and you get a film that really had nothing going for it. Again, if you want an average 90s movie, this might be for you, but it feels so out of place in all the wrong ways and there's way too much flaws for me to defend it for that reason. The human moments don't have time to breathe, the characters can't express any emotion and everything here feels way too rushed. A lot of the reviews are saying that the MCU references were cut out but honestly that isn't even important when scenes of story and character building are cut out too. And maybe Morbius didn't cut that sort of stuff out but if that is the case then what was the point of this story? I felt that after watching it and to be honest I think this is the kind of film that will have a lot of viewers feeling like they wasted their time. Then there's the bizarre use of visual effects surrounding the vampire action we do see. A majority of the action scenes have a very blatant blur of CGI and unfortunately it is so shoddy. Especially when we get to the final fight with Morbius and another character which just looks like a complete mess. The cinematography doesn't help with the film's applied shaky cam, the lighting is way too dim and when you add these poor production choices onto a terrible script and story you may have one of the worst blockbusters to come out in recent years. It appears more outdated than the traditional superhero film and while that can be fun in certain scenes and also provide opportunity for the studio and filmmaker to do something quite different from the casual MCU fare, it also means that if you don't do it right then it looks all the more worse for it. And unfortunately that's the case with Morbius. Again, I think Morbius had the chance of being something unique, especially if there were more appropriate creative choices involved. It's part horror movie, part vampire movie, and part superhero origin movie, and in the craziest way, it combines the most standard elements of those three types of film, rather than going all in on one. Even if this movie had focused more on capturing the 90s superhero film in the best way it could, I think it could have been way better. There are a few fun scenes and moments where the visual effects are executed better, and that comes in the more restrained moments, rather than the blops and blurred scenes. CGI that situates here more than it should. It's definitely a film that plays into that question of superhero fatigue and I think under another studio it may have resulted in a much more coherent and polished end result. Still I will say that I enjoyed this more than Venom Let There Be Carnage, it's just not really a high bar to reach. Maybe when Sony does introduce more of their characters they can make this work in the future but right now it feels like they took a film and story with potential and rushed it so that they could bring in more villains to fight Spider-Man. But that was my spoiler-free review for Morbius. 
On Sony's part, the want to expand the Spider-Man universe using his villains is understandable, especially from the studio side of things when you look at how popular their Spider-Man and Venom films have been. But if I had to be honest, everything we saw in the early trailers and footage was what we got here, as Morbius is the big budget misstep and soulless endeavour that most will find forgettable. There is Matt Smith's energetic performance and Jared Leto is fine, but it all seems like most people people involved here were just going easy. There was no urge to make this the unique film it could be with a better script. It doesn't even turn out to be the kind of movie that is so bad that it has some good qualities in there, like how Venom did to a certain degree. It's one of the worst of the comic book genre, and I'd even rank it amongst that of the last Fantastic Four film and X-Men Dark Phoenix. Overall, Morbius is one of the most forgettable films in recent memory, and it most certainly doesn't leave its mark on what has become quite a full genre of similar looking and feeling films. And even those pictures rank much better than this. I'm giving Morbius a rating of 4 out of 10. But to those who have already seen the film, what did you think of the latest entry in the Sony Spider-Verse, and do you agree that it was a weak one in this universe? Again, it's all subjective, and I appreciate a range of reactions and reviews to it, so let me know down below in the comment section what you personally thought towards the film, alongside things that stood out with your first impressions. For more videos surrounding the latest comic book and movie releases, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.